Hello everybody, we are here at Highland Community College for the Northwest Illinois Rock Club's Gem Jewelry and Fossil Show. That's right. Uh, hey, Brad, didn't you uh, start your educational uh, career here? I sure did. This is where I decided that I like to study rocks enough to get a degree in it. Now, uh, you say this is a rock show. Uh, do you mean rock and roll? I do. They brought the rocks, so let's roll on through and see what's here. All right, man. Yeah, let's do this. I can't wait to get in there. All right. All right. Hello everybody, we are here with Mr. Steve Simpson. How you doing today? Pretty good, thank you. That's great to hear. So, um, we're here at this rock show. Uh, I love these rock shows, they're lots of fun. I get to meet lots of cool people. Uh, and you being one of them, Steve. So, uh, can you tell our audience here what it is your study of expertise is? <clears throat> well, that's interesting. You know, when I was in grad school, I studied igneous petrology. Okay. I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah, igneous petrology. Oh, wow, That's I don't, what does that mean? Help me out here. Studying igneous rocks. So igneous rocks are rocks that used to be lava or magma. Okay. Magma and lava, yeah, yeah those are uh, hot, right? Fiery hot. Very right? hot, it's a very hot yeah. topic. So how do you study those? Well, you, uh, you, you take the rocks and you slice them really, really thin and you look at them under a microscope. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, tell me, uh, as an individual who studies these things, uh, what is one of the most exciting things you've ever discovered? Well, let's see, actually, uh, you know, way back in grad school, I, I discovered basically a, a, a 60 million year old volcano. It was kind of neat when I, when I did my master's what? thesis, uh, I, I went into this area, it, it had just been mapped as granite. And I was going in there to, to kind of study the granite. And I went in there, it's this wilderness area, and I didn't find any granite. And all I found was all this fine-grained rock and all these complex structures. And I'll be darned if by the time I didn't finish, I, I, I discovered a, a whole new volcanic area, changed the geologic map of Idaho, so the Rhodes Peak Volcanic Cauldron. Wow, that's amazing. Now, obviously, this isn't an active volcano, right? <laughs> right. It was, it was active 60 million years ago. Now everything wow. is solidified. It's eroded down. And so what I was looking at is the ancient plumbing system for the whole volcanic system. Wow, that's amazing. You must have had a lot of fun discovering that, huh? That was pretty neat. So, uh, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about trilobites, and we all know what those are, and yes, we love them. Uh, can you tell me what the biggest trilobite ever f discovered was? The biggest trilobite ever discovered was on the shore of Hudson's Bay. It was 72 centimeters long, which is about uh, two and a half feet. Wow! And uh, it, it, it's called Isotelus rex. Uh, of course, because like you know Iran it's big and, and scary. Yeah, rex. yeah, big and scary. It's a T-Rex, you know. Wow. And I remember I, we, we, the guy who discovered it, I saw him give a talk. And he was, he was walking along this tidal flat, and he saw it, and he said, I remember exactly what I said when I first saw it, but I can't repeat it. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't repeat that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe for Otis after dark. Uh, okay, yeah. maybe for Otis later. So, yeah, um, so we're here in the northern Illinois region. What kind of uh, fossils can we find here? We can find trilobites, we can find brachiopods, we can find receptaculites. Uh, receptaculites, yeah, I heard about this one time. Yeah, I heard about this in an older yeah. video. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. did. Um, yeah. But, yeah, receptaculites, that's amazing. So, uh, here's a question I like to ask everybody here that I do these interviews with. What's your favorite dinosaur? What's my favorite dinosaur? I would probably have to say um, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's why we're friends, Steve, because you know, okay. I like the Tyrannosaurus Rex too myself, you know. <laughs> I, I was really lucky. I got to take part in the excavation of, of, of Jane. <gasps> Jane, uh, we love Jane. Yeah. I know Jane. Yeah, yeah, she's really, really awesome. You were there? I, yeah, I got to spend like a day and a half digging all around her, her, her mandible. Wow. It's pretty amazing. You know, I, I've been on a dig one time in a quarry. Uh, yeah, I found myself a little snail. It was pretty great. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, so much. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time here, Steve. Uh, you're an amazing person. Um, and thank you for all the discoveries you've done and all the, the kids that you taught through your career, man. It's really awesome. 
Um, and I'm glad that you continue to do this. So thank you so much. Well, Otis, and thank you. We really appreciate all you're doing to promote science. What's going on, everybody? Today we are here with Paul Sapira. How you doing today, sir? Uh, pretty good, thank you, Otis. Yeah. yeah, not a problem. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview with us. Well, you're a pretty special guy around here, so we gotta cut you some time. Wow, did you hear that, Brad? I know you heard that. <laughs> so anyway, Paul, uh, tell us a little bit about your work. Well, I'm what's called a planetary geologist. <gasps> a planetary geologist? Yes, so I study moon rocks, meteorites, surface of Mars, asteroids, all kinds of neat things out in space. Wow, that's amazing. I love space. Uh, you know, space is so cool. I tell everybody that uh, if I had to go into the ocean or get shot in space, I'd rather be shot in space. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a nice place to be. Uh, that's what I hear. <laughs> so, hey, I got a few questions for you there, Paul. Uh, what kind of rocks do we find in space? Well, the rocks that are floating around in space, most of them come from a place called the asteroid belt that's between Mars and Jupiter, or if it's in Mars and Jupiter. And they come in three basic types. These are meteorites that are made of iron, stony irons, and stones. Wow, iron, huh? We can find iron here on Earth, can't we? Well, yes, we can. Wow. And actually, the iron on Earth is originally coming from these meteorites from space. Really? That is fascinating! So uh, tell me, I've always wondered, what's the difference between an asteroid and a comet, uh, you know, and all that? Well, good. We could start with uh, asteroids first. Uh, asteroids are kind of like little mini planets. They range in size from 100 feet across to 600 miles across. What? 600 miles? They are big. Oh, wow. So meteorites, on the other hand, are bits and pieces of these asteroids that made it to the Earth's surface, but they are 100 feet or less in size. Wow, They're so, so what, you're, bits. what you're telling me here is, is that the iron we find here on Earth was out in space? That's absolutely right. And they are about 50 million years older than the Earth itself. What? That is insane! So we have rocks here on Earth that are older than the Earth itself. That is correct. What a fascinating fact. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. So when does uh, you know, a space rock become a meteorite? Well, in space, they're called meteoroids. When they're coming through the Earth's atmosphere like a shooting star, then they're called a meteor. And if it makes it to the Earth's surface like this, then they become a meteorite. Wow, so this is an actual meteorite we it's have here? An actual meteorite. Wow, I wonder if this was on Mars at one point. Well, not this one. <laughs> there are some meteorites that do come from Mars, but this one came from the asteroid belt. Wow, that's totally awesome. Well, that is a terrific. Thank you so much for sharing this information with us. I just have one more question for you, and I ask everybody this question. What is your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur is purple, and his name is Barney. Barney? Yeah, you know, I once hung out with Barney. Super nice guy, man. He's a really good dinosaur, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Paul, for taking the time to, uh, you know, do this interview and uh, sharing with us uh, you know, the little meteorite here. And uh, guys, I think you can go and find meteorites pretty much anywhere, right? Well, not anywhere. Best place is Antarctica okay. or the deserts of Algeria and Morocco. Wow. There's some fascinating places. Guys, get out there and look. You might be able to find it if you're in those places. Uh, anyway, again, Paul, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, guys, stay, uh, stay tuned in to uh, Uncredited for more amazing adventures and more information, guys. Uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next episode of Uncredited.